Alright, before we begin, um, there's a couple vocabulary words you need to write down in your notebook. The first one is haploid, and a haploid cell is a cell that has a half set of chromosomes. So it has half as many chromosomes as its parent cell had. So if the parent cell started out with 10 chromosomes, a haploid cell would then have 5 chromosomes. And the opposite of a haploid cell is a diploid cell. And a diploid cell is a cell that has a full set of chromosomes. So it has the same number of chromosomes as its parent cell had. So with that in mind, let's look at this diagram. This diagram is going to compare two processes. One process that you already know about, mitosis, and one process that you're about to hear about. Um, so in mitosis, we start out with a parent cell. And that parent cell goes through interphase, G1, S, and G2. And when it comes out of interphase, it's going to have its DNA already copied. Um, and notice that both of these cells have four chromosomes in them, uh, whether they're a line, an individual chromosome, or an X, which is a duplicated chromosome. And they both count as one chromosome, so we have one, two, three, four in both of those. That's a full set in these pictures, so that those are both going to be diploid cells. And when they reproduce through mitosis, um, you're going to get two daughter cells, and each of them are going to have one individual, uh, um, four individual chromosomes in them. And because it has a full set of four, we call them diploid cells. So in mitosis, we're going from diploid cells to diploid cells. So these are all the regular cells in your body, things like heart cells and nerve cells and skin cells. They all go through mitosis. Now, on the other hand, we have meiosis. In meiosis, we start out with a parent cell, which has four chromosomes, so it's diploid. And it's going to go through the same part of the cell cycle that um, the mitosis cell went through. So it's going to go through the G1, S, and G2 phase of interphase. And when it comes out of that, it'll have duplicated chromosomes that look like Xs. But it still has four of them, so it still has a full set, so that's a diploid cell. And then it's going to go through meiosis 1, which are, um, is the space here. This would be meiosis 1. And when it comes out of meiosis 1, you're going to have two cells produced which each have half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell. So we have one, two here, and that's half of four, which is what we had to begin with. So because these have half a set of chromosomes, we call them haploid cells. And then we go through meiosis two, which is going to happen right here, and you're, pro you're left with four daughter cells, and each of the daughter cells have um, two chromosomes, even though they're not X's, they're still individual chromosomes. So we're left with four cells with two chromosomes each. That's a half set of chromosomes in each of those, so we call them haploid cells. All right. Meiosis is very similar to mitosis, um, but meiosis is the process that you need to produce reproductive cells. Um, which we sometimes call gametes. That's another word for reproductive cells or sex cells. So that's either going to be egg or sperm. Um, and meiosis is a two-part process, whereas mitosis is just one part. And the other difference between meiosis and mitosis is that meiosis is a one-way process, um, so it's not a cycle. So the daughter cells that are produced in meiosis don't continue to divide. Um, they, they go through the process once and then they're done. And um, in meiosis, we start out with a parent cell, and we end up with four daughter cells. So remember, in mitosis, you had two cells produced. Now you're going to have four cells that are produced. And like I said, those four cells are going to be sex cells, so either egg or sperm. And we're going to go through the first half of meiosis, and then the second half of meiosis. In the first half of meiosis, now keep in mind that this is a all one process, but it happens in two parts. So in the first part, we're going to produce two daughter cells. And those daughter cells will be haploid, which means they'll have half a set of chromosomes rather than a full set of chromosomes. All right, the first part of meiosis one is prophase one. In this phase, we have the nuclear envelope breaking down. We can see the dotted line there. And we also have the chromosomes um, forming X's, just like in mitosis. 
but instead of just floating freely in the cytoplasm, they're going to form pairs. So the short ones will pair up with each other and the long ones will pair up with each other. And these pairs of chromosomes are called tetrads. They're called a tetrad because they have four individual chromatids. So we have one, two, three, four chromatids, um, and all together they, they make a tetrad. And we call these chromosomes that are the same size homologous chromosomes. So homologous means that they are the same size. So they are going to pair up in prophase 1. And the other thing that happens in prophase 1 is called crossing over. And this is where the tetrads are going to kind of get mixed up when they cross over each other and you're going to get some mixing of the DNA and so some of the DNA from one of the chromosomes will be combined with the DNA from another chromosome and the other chromosome will contribute some DNA to the uh, partner and so you're going to get some mixing of the DNA. Um, now crossing over is part of the reason why we have genetic variation in species so this is the reason why when your parents' cells reproduced, um, they didn't produce exactly the same kinds of cells. And so you don't look exactly like your parents, and your brothers and sisters don't look exactly like you. Because when the sex cells that produced you were um, created through meiosis, you had crossing over that went on, and you created some unique combinations of DNA after those got mixed up. So after prophase 1, we have metaphase 1. In metaphase 1, the tetrads are going to line up in the middle of the cell. And this is different from mitosis because in mitosis you have one line of chromosomes right down the middle. But here it looks like you have two lines of chromosomes. And that's because the chromosomes are going to remain in their tetrads, in their groups of two. And um, they're going to line up in the middle. You can see that the spindle fibers here are red. They're going to push the, spin push the chromosomes to the middle. After metaphase 1, we have anaphase 1. In anaphase 1, the tetrads are broken and split from, and are pulled to opposite sides of the cell. And notice that it's a full chromosome that moves to the side in each case, rather than half of a chromosome. So we still have the X shape rather than just having a V shape being pulled to the side. So the tetrad is broken rather than the individual chromosome. And then we have telophase 1, and this is where you're going to get a new nuclear envelope starting to form and a new cell membrane forming right down the middle. These red things left over here are the centrioles, that's what formed the spindle fibers. So they're just left over in the cell. And so these are our two haploid gametes that are produced. Notice that they have two chromosomes in each, and originally we had four chromosomes, and so they're haploid because they have a half set of chromosomes. After meiosis 1, we move right into meiosis 2, and in this process we're going to produce four haploid gametes. So again, they'll have half a set of chromosomes, and they're gametes because they're sex cells. So we're going to take the two cells that were produced in meiosis 1 and carry them through all of meiosis 2. So that's why we have two cells here. Those are the two cells that were produced in meiosis 1. Okay, so for prophase 2, uh, which is the first step of meiosis 2, the nuclear envelope will begin to break down. And these are the centrioles getting ready to make the spindle fibers. And then we'll move into metaphase 2. In metaphase 2, those chromosomes will line up in the middle of the cell. Now this is very similar to mitosis, in fact it looks pretty much the same, except that now you're dealing with two cells instead of just one. And so the spindle fibers will attach and push them to the middle of the cell. Then we'll move on to anaphase 2. In anaphase 2, the chromosome is broken right in the middle and pulled to opposite sides of the cell, so you get a V-shape of just one chromatid from each chromosome moving to the side of the cell. And again, we're working with two cells instead of one. That's really the only difference between anaphase 2 and anaphase and mitosis. And in telophase 2, we're left with four new cells, and each of those cells has half a set of chromosomes. They only have two. And so um, we call them haploid cells, and they're all sex cells, so either egg or sperm. So these are gametes, because gametes are sex cells.